Timicon have sent over the Melbourne Tool Company large router plane for me to have a bit of a squiz at. You might remember a while ago I looked at their initial offering, the low angle block plane, and I had a few issues with it. So I took a little bit of umbrage with the name, which I, I guess I still do now, but there were some larger issues with quality control in the machining, which I thought was a bit so-so when they're trying to break into that premium market. I'm happy to report that those same machining issues are not present in this large router plane. But first, I find that hand tool reviews are perhaps a little bit trickier than power tool reviews. Power tools, when you're reviewing them, do they do the thing is usually the big question. How fast do they do whatever the thing is? How quiet, how good's the dust collection? You know, um, when I'm ripping lots of thick hardwood, does this particular bandsaw do it better than this particular one? How efficient is that energy transference? How good is the included blade? Hand tools are much less about that. While yes, there is that binary, does it do the thing or doesn't it do the thing? A lot of what makes a good hand tool is the feel. Sometimes that's a real personal thing. How does this tool make me feel when I'm doing it? What is the connection with the wood, if you like? Uh, and sometimes it's just, basic ergonomics and some tools are horrible with their ergonomics. I have a good example over here. These two saws are both ostensibly dovetail saws. This one here, this Japanese pull saw, it's a great saw, it'll cut through wood and it makes me feel like a complete idiot. I cannot stand using it, it just does not connect with my brain. This western style dovetail saw, push saw, I find it is almost an extension to my body and I can get much better results. It may cut slightly worse than this Japanese Dazuki, but the results that I get with it are better because I am able to control it better because it just connects with my brain better. Coincidentally, this is a Veritas dovetail saw and we'll be comparing the Melbourne Tool Company large router plane to the Veritas large router plane, which is more or less the de facto standard of router planes these days. And as a bit of a spoiler, uh, I've been using this Melbourne Tool Company router plane and it, it compares really favorably. I actually don't know which one I'd recommend at the same price point. But this is $150 less Australian than the Veritas, which makes it actually pretty good. So what do you get for your 250 Australian dollars? Everything you see here, you get the, the large router plane, you get one cutter, it is a half inch cutter. They did also send me a six mil cutter, which is around somewhere, which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, the fence is included standard, which is nice to see. It's extra on the Veritas. A little hex key for installing the fence, which I'll touch on that a little bit later. You might notice that this has an angled bed, which is unusual because most router planes don't really have a bed to be angled. The blade itself is just a straight blade. So uh, this angle here more or less doesn't matter. It is the relief angle of the blade. The bed is at 50 degrees, a standard bench plane is at 45 degrees so it's not particularly uncommon. About the only downside I can think of for having an angled bed like this is the blade always has to face one direction. If we take a look at the Veritas router plane you can see that I flipped the blade here so you can go in reverse which doesn't sound like <laughs> it's an amazing feature but it does mean that because this is sticking out past the end of the body in this orientation you can get right into the corner of something. Personally I actually haven't used this feature but some people would probably. If you've not seen a router plane before or router plane blades before you might not notice what is a bit unusual about this. Uh, this is your more common style that you'd find this L shape. This shape has been used since at least 1885 when Stanley introduced their number 71 router plane. The 71 has been more or less the de facto standard form factor for router planes. Lee Nielsen, Veritas, Record, other brands have all made more or less copies of that 71 plane because it works quite well. They've all used the same sort of uh, blade. Many of them are compatible between different brands as well. This one obviously is not compatible and it's not bad. Now, when I say not bad, that's for two reasons. The first is that the Melbourne Tool Company have an almost complete range of blades for this, sizes of blades for this 
uh, router plane. I think the smallest is an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. It comes in both metric and imperial versions. I'd like to see a 1 16th inch, which is what I have here. Uh, I use that for string inlay. It probably doesn't matter, like it's a niche within a niche, but it would be nice to have that as an option. It's something they could add. And the second reason is just because this is what is now the traditional blade shape, doesn't mean it's actually a better blade. This is a pain in the backside to sharpen, whereas to their credit, that's something the Melbourne Tool Company have done is made a very easy to sharpen blade. Uh, particularly at this half inch size, it's stinking big and it's really easy to put the pressure in the right spot to sharpen it. If we do look at sharpening, obviously the Melbourne Tool Company blade is super easy to sharpen. A little bit of pressure and you can ride that bevel no problem and it's nice and flat on the back so you can polish that up too. The Veritas and the Stanley blades and the Lee Nielsen blades are a couple of options. The larger Veritas ones will come with a removable cutter. You get the stem of the cutter that you can unscrew and the blade itself and they do have this jig which comes with the tool that you can sort of grab on and sharpen that way or you can load the tool into a honing guide like so and look you can sharpen it that way that's not too bad not all of their cutters come with this removable stem certainly the smaller sizes don't this is what the 1 16th inch looks like so to sharpen that we have to like oh that's hitting the workbench so i need to like Go off the edge of the workbench and then maybe do some back and forth motions and then yeah so full credit to the Melbourne Tool Company designed plane while the straight blade seems less designed you know less effort went into it it's an improvement on the sharpening situation while we're talking about sharpening um, you can sharpen these fairly easily freehand but you may run into some issues with honing guides. I found the Eclipse style honing guides are no good for this. It just can't get a good enough purchase on these particular dimensions. It's just a little bit too thick and it tended to you can probably hear that wobble around. I just couldn't quite get a good grip on it. If you're using the Veritas honing guide, the side clamping guide, also no good. Um, again, just could not get a secure enough grasp on it. So you probably want to use a top clamping guide like the Veritas Mark II, uh, though you will need to set it to the uh, number one setting, which is high angles, then to 30 degrees. Otherwise, you'll foul on the bar and you won't be able to sharpen it. You'll end up sharpening your honing guide instead. Last thing to say about the blade itself is, that from this one at least, did not come sharp from the factory. I'm not really going to demerit any points for that. I'm not keeping track of any points. It's a separate issue because it's so easy to sharpen. If the Veritas cutters came dull out of the box, that would be more of an issue when you're paying a premium for them and they're so tricky to sharpen. A little less jibber jabber and more showing off results and how you'd use this. Here is a dado that I'm working on with hand tools. So first, you establish it with a chisel. Now I could come back with a smaller chisel and remove all of that. But a router plane is a better tool for this particular task. Despite having the two knobs, you really only need one loosened to adjust the blade, then you can retighten that. So it's not too arduous to adjust it. Ergonomically, there's a fair bit different between the MTC plane and the Veritas. You can see the shape of the handles, the size of the handles, but what's a little bit harder to see is the width of the plane itself. So the Veritas, by comparison, feels quite small. Well, maybe a little bit small. The knobs, while a little bit more comfortable being splayed out than if they were straight up, are much smaller as well. So if you've got small hands, you may find that this isn't amazing. These might be better suited for you. They're much further apart. Would they be better angled? I'm not sure. Now I've bit off a little bit too much there. So on that getting out the pitch gauge, I can see that this is a one millimeter pitch on the MTC plane. That means for every rotation of the knob, the blade is advancing one millimeter. That's fine. On the Veritas, it's 0.8 millimeters. It is a compromise between what is faster to advance it back and forth and what isn't, what gives you that finer control. I don't necessarily think that one millimeters is too much. 
but I don't necessarily think that 0.8 millimeters is worse. Probably means that every time you want to adjust the plane, you're gonna go for about maybe a quarter of a turn and you'll know how far you've gone down. So quarter of a turn, you've gone quarter of a millimeter, which makes removing the waste perhaps a little bit easier to calculate. You don't wanna be hogging off too much with any one pass because it's just not gonna be fun. Cut the dado and the depth stop does what it says on the box. It stops it at a death. A death, a depth. It is just a little brass holder thingy that clamps onto the blade itself. I actually like this a little bit more than how Veritas do that, where it clamps onto the threaded rod that raises the blade up and down. So it basically stops on the knob itself. The other thing you could technically do is get a couple of depth stops. So I could come back to that exact setting. So perhaps I've got a couple of different slots I need to make. They could all have their own depth stop uh, and I could just leave them like that. Maybe it's not that useful feature, but I do kind of like it. I suppose it is pudding time and here is the proof of the pudding that that's nice and flat. Does what a router plane should do. The last thing that makes a router plane a router plane, at least to me, is the fence. This comes with a fence standard. We've got the fence piece itself and the bracket that it attaches to between the router plane and the fence. The fence is fine, it's a piece of aluminium. Uh, threaded on a little steel rod that then will get clamped in like that and you get a reasonable amount of range. The fence is interesting. It's maybe a little bit short this way if we compare it to the Veritas fence. It's quite a bit shorter and it's a little bit uh, shorter in the height as well. To attach the fence there are two holes on either side of either handle uh, and pick a side that you want the fence to come in on. Two bolts go through, two bolts go through and they attach to this arm. The slot in this is what provides the clamping action for the fence itself and immobilizes it. With the fence attached, it's just this screw here to loosen and tighten it, which is interesting. It is from above, which is quite nice. By contrast, the Veritas router plane has the knob on the bottom, so you need to loosen that before you can adjust the fence and you might actually see another problem that this can create. For the Melbourne Tool Company router plane the bracket that attaches the fence and the fence itself are quite narrow so I can have this in my vise adjust away and the blade is still or well, the whole plane is still perfectly flat on the workpiece. If we go to the Veritas that taller fence and that bracket and bottom adjustable knob really get in the way. This sort of workpiece could not be held in a vise and used with a router plane. You just can't get it to sit flat. Perhaps this isn't even a realistic use case for a router plane, but it is an interesting piece of design that I didn't think was that big a deal. And then sometimes you can't use the plane to do the thing that you want it to do because it physically won't fit. So that's a nice little design thing. Credit should be noted where it is due. Circling back to the start of the video, how does this tool make me feel when I'm using it? Um, actually pretty good. The handles are comfortable. The wide base provides a lot of stability. It's easy to sharpen, which removes a lot of the uh, trepidation about actually using a tool and then dulling it and then having to go through that somewhat arduous process on other router planes. There are only a couple of examples where the Veritas plane can do something that the MTC plane can't. That's the string inlay with the thinner cutter as well as the inlay cutter head and this reversible blade feature to get into the corner of uh, an object. Other than those two instances, I'm really failing to find a reason why this is objectively better. For some people, the country of origin will play a big part in that. Uh, the Veritas planes are made in Canada. The Melbourne Tool Company planes, while well, they're designed in Australia, they're manufactured in China. That's a whole different kettle of worms to open up, uh, but the reality is this is a high quality tool that is made from good quality materials and it is substantial. And perhaps more importantly than that, it is accessible. The pricing of it makes this much more accessible than a tool that is almost twice the price. More people are gonna get into woodworking if they can afford the tools rather than just having to do without. If you're in Australia, the MPC planes are available from Timbercon and a couple of other select retailers. If you're in North America, Vic Teslin in Canada is now 
doing something with MTC planes. I'm not sure if he is the importer or distributor or whatever, but he is the, the ambassador, the spearhead over there. So it should be more available to more people uh, starting soon, if not already. It'll be interesting to see where MTC go in the future for other tools, whether they continue using M2 steel for all of their tools and maybe go for some chisels. I know there are a couple of uh, M2 chisels, uh, Harold and Saxby's have them and they're regarded as quite high end. But it's good to see that the early teething issues of machining have been addressed and they're producing higher quality than what they were and that puts them in the premium market hopefully giving higher quality, more accessible hand tools to more people. I have no qualms in recommending the MTC large router plane. It's a good quality tool. Uh, if you already own a router plane, I probably wouldn't go and replace it. If you've got a Lee Nielsen or a uh, Veritas or a Stanley, they're gonna perform the functions just fine, but it's really nice to have another affordable, accessible option that is of high quality. I think that's all I really have to say about that. Thanks for watching.